Hey, welcome back to another Black City Coffee vlog. In this video, I want to do, um, just do a little like rundown process, some thoughts, new thoughts about um, going to my first brewing class with Hasea Coffee. That was really fun. I picked up some cool stuff. Um, I got some green for myself for personal drinking. Um, later on today, I have a couple of orders to roast, uh, roast for some family and friends, roast for myself. So a brewing class. Now, I just like, <laughs> I just never thought I would go to a brewing class. If that, I don't know why. I think I was just too, too much in my little hole. Um, you know, I, I was like, yeah, cupping for sure, roasting for sure, anything that I could um, accelerate that end of the spectrum. And for some reason, I was just not giving the same attention and the same um, love or thought or whatever uh, or energy to the brewing portion. And I was like, eh, I got it down. <laughs> I'm not really sure where that comes from. It could be, it could be just from not being very practiced in trying new things. I think I'm the type of person when I find something I like, like for example, um, all the restaurants we go to, I typically will order the same thing. I'll stay in the same lane, which when I say it out loud, I'm like, oh, it's because I like consistency and I don't like to be dis disappointed. <laughs> so I definitely, um, that's, that's where I'm coming from. I want consistency. I know, um, you know, especially with my coffee, I'm just like, I know it's good this way. I know I like it this way. So I really don't want to stray uh, outside of that because sometimes to me when I try new things and I don't like them, it feels wasteful. So it's definitely for me, like in my defense, not coming from like pig headedness or an, an intentional, um, an intentional feeling to like actively shut things out. It's that I'm trying so hard to preserve what I like if that makes sense. Anyway, so I took my notebook because I'm trying to be better at note taking and um, I wrote a couple of things down, but not too many, but a couple of things that I think would be interesting to share with you guys, how things are extracted in the brewing process and the scale from the start of the brew to the end of the brew, you're brewing certain aspects of the coffee uh, at a certain time. So in the beginning of the roast, I mean the roast, the brew, you're, you're getting more of the uh, acidity and then next you're getting more of the sugars and then at the end you're getting more of the bitterness. And bitterness, that tail end of that, is kind of like what gives coffee coffee's complexity. It's what I think makes coffee interesting and not one note and when you can hit all these little things on the spectrum of of taste and of flavor when you're actually um, drinking a cup of coffee versus like when you're on the cupping table is just a little bit different experience. Um, I thought that was super interesting and I definitely will have that more in mind now that you can make a coffee a little bit brighter and really accentuate a coffee's like acidity if you have shorter brew times. Um, that's not a blanket statement but we're kind of like just trying to talk about theory. And then if you go past another uh, time stamp in the in the brew rate or in the brewing uh, total time brew, um, we get into the more sugars that are that are like, I guess, tasted in the brew. And then later on the bitterness. So in theory, the shorter the brew, the brighter, more sour, I guess. Um, uh, in acidity, I guess, in, in, in flavor. And then the longer the brew, like you could over extract things that become more bitter. Um, so theory, right? This is not to uh, give your rules. So uh, I just thought that was super interesting. One of the big things that, you know, Jared was talking about during class was there was a lot of factors that can dictate uh, I guess, you know, the drinkability of certain brews and the methods and all that stuff. And the only thing that really matters is, I guess you could say one, the one, the only thing that really matters is one is taste for you. <laughs> that's like the, that's like the cop out answer. Um, but the only thing that matters technically is strength, meaning total to dissolve solids of coffee in water. So how strong is it? Um, not in terms of how much caffeine is it, but how strong, how much strength, how much 
coffee is actually dissolved in water, the total dissolved solids. That was the big kind of takeaway for me um, in terms of like the technicalities of what's going on chemically with coffee being brewed, right? I asked about a couple things like bypass. Um, bypass meaning like you pour your water, say you're brewing, um, you're brewing pour over and you bypass the coffee and pour water onto the filter and bypass the coffee and then go down and it, and it um, technically would dilute the coffee too much, right? And I asked about that because the fellow stag brewer that I picked up right behind me, or you do that. And when you were, when I was learning pour over V60 style, that was like a sin, <laughs> a brewing sin. So I asked about that and he said, well, you know, the stag brewer has it kind of like, it's built in to, to brew that way. So it's made for that dilution, right? So we shouldn't judge a certain brewer based on other brewers rules, right? So for example, I won't use the same, the exact same one-to-one -one mentality and theory for a V60 brewing uh, components and, and, and construction and then transfer that straight over to the fellow stag brewer with the, uh, with these kind of, with these kind of filters, right? With this like wavy thingy pattern and uh, compare that directly and try to make a one-to-one -one comparison to like the V60 or even the Chemex uh, construction of brewing. So I thought that was super interesting and that answered my questions and made me feel less like conflicted like, should I be bypassing? Should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? Um, anyway, we landed on, we should still try to hit the grounds with the water, but it's okay to kind of bypass uh, the coffee on a fellow stag brewer because it's made like that. It's made to do that. And uh, in so doing, the brewers that are made like this, like the Kalita Wave and, and the stag brewer, um, they're more forgiving about that. Because yeah, the V60, the Chemex, um, you're not supposed to touch the outside filter and they're made like that. So yeah, it's gonna be a little bit harder. And that's why I kind of straight away before even talking about this brewery class, I strayed away from V60 and I kind of looked at is it special and if I had the time and I really had the energy to do that, you know, very uh, skillful work of brewing coffee that way. And I came over to Aeropress, which is a total immersion sort of uh, brewing, which it requires a lot less skill in terms of pouring and, and things like that. So I thought that was super interesting. Um, I learned about a new brewer called the Gabby Brewer. I'll put a, a link here and I think it's very interesting. And when we were doing taste tests of all these brewers during this, this uh, brewing class, which was, again, that was a really great takeaway is just see how things are supposed to be brewed or supposed to be done or in an ideal situation, comparing them to each other and see what you like personally. You know, there's no wrong answer about how uh, you want to brew coffee. Um, but we did learn about which methods bring out certain uh, flavor uh, flavors in certain you know roasts? I think what we were doing today was a natural, a natural processed uh, Ethiopian uh, worka, and I, I've tasted something similar to that. Um, that that coffee that I was uh, that Sadama coffee that I got from Mizar Coffee and just really good coffee, really tasty. So we were spoiled today with a lot of different um, brew methods of this coffee. And I have some right here. This is from the French press version, which was not my favorite, you know, brewing it, but they were gonna throw this away. So I was like, I knew, and I brought my little like fellow travel mug. I knew they were gonna have some kind of leftover. So I brought this and I have it here and it's, it's safe in here. Um, and even though I don't drink a lot of like, it wasn't my favorite because it kind of like encapsulate that experience. It's special to me now. Um, and I got to tell everybody about my little travel mug and I kind of gushed about it because of it's, it's awesome. Output is the only thing that matters. So if you're, if you're weighing stuff, the output is the only thing that matters. That's, that's something that was really heavily talked about today. And, um, 
that was really interesting for me. Um, the video I made before this, I was talking about, I'm, I'm not the person to be so meticulous and write things down and measure and all that kind of stuff. And I think it's because, you know, my perspective on that before was because um, I think in doing so, I'd be maybe too overwhelmed or maybe too focused on the details and maybe looking at measuring and taking notes and weighing things out and being very meticulous about things mm -hmm. took away from the intuition of things, the natural craft, handmade sort of thing about it. Like, I'm very skeptical about becoming too scientific, about becoming too perfect. I almost have an aversion to perfect, super popular. I always am just very cautious about that because I don't, I don't want to be a, a sheep. I don't want to be a bandwagoner. I really want to, um, you know, make sure that I'm, I'm choosing choices that I believe in. <laughs> but so that's a good intention in, in, in general, but I think sometimes it, it really does pigeonhole me. I pigeonhole myself with that kind of thinking sometimes where I'm like, I'm not trying to be perfect. And, and then, and then find myself not opening my mind to, um, another way or, you know, just like being a little too closed minded is all. So I'm, I'm seeing that now. And every time I step to coffee, like I told you guys, like coffee humbles me all the time. So I want to continue that practice for sure. And just keep, um, trying new things, trying new classes where I, th if I think I know how to do it, that'll be my sign of like, oh, I should probably go learn and I should probably go take notes. You know, I should probably be quiet and, and listen right now, you know? So if I have that thought or if I have that, uh, sort of energy in my in my brain that says oh, I know how to do that then that'll be my signal <laughs> that'll be my signal to tell me oh you better go just listen and see and see what you can pick up there see what you can add on to your your knowledge base and and um have fun with it you know and I did I did ha I had so much fun today and I, I felt like I was with my people <laughs> at first at first always I'm very quiet and shy. And then the moment we start talking about coughing, I get a little, you know, chatty and I can come out of my shell a little bit and I feel like I'm with my people. You know, it's very cool. Very nice. Yeah, we talked about some recipes. Um, most of the time you can find a lot of these online, so I don't think it's very, like, necessary for me to share. I think at some point when I dial in my own recipe, which I don't think it's going to be too different from what you can find online or with find through a company like Fellow or something. Um, It'll just be a, be a matter of like, oh, I, I know my machine, I know how it works, or I know my grinder, I know how it works, I know my brewer, I know how it works. So I need to get to that point in my brewing journey. Um, so I'll still be on the, um, uh, I'm just, I feel like I'm just starting that. Like I'm really going to start now my brewing journey and, and really kind of understand, nail down and be really familiar with brewing. Um, or really just get, get started on that instead of, I don't know what I was doing before. I can't really label it. I don't want to label it. I just know I need, I want to take the next step. I want to go deeper for me, you know, not, and not compare it to anybody else. But for me, I know I've, I've hit a certain plateau with brewing and I think I've gotten very comfortable with it. Um, and I haven't been really, uh, I guess monitoring or managing uh, this side of the coffee process, which is brewing. And I've been doing it a little bit, but I don't know, for me, I feel like <laughs> I need to do more, you know? And I'm excited to do more. Not that I feel like I'm um, like, I'm trying to keep up with Joneses or something or trying to like fulfill this thing where I have, I have to do it because, oh, that's what everybody else is doing. Like I said, I'm not, I don't feel like I ever want to be a sheep in, in any industry that I'm in. I want to make choices for myself and actually really believe in them. But that brings me to this, which is so pretty. Like, look at it. So pretty, right? I'll let you read what that says too, right there. Okay. <laughs> so, the Coffee Brewer's Logbook. Isn't that so pretty? I mean, I had to get it alone because it was pretty, but then I think, you know, because it's pretty, it's gonna motivate me to, again, 
log my coffee brews. So what I'll be doing with this information is just to start documenting my brews, you know, um, and for the, not for the purpose of just like being anal about my coffee, but for figuring out what I like, you know, and understanding what happens when you have a shorter brew versus a longer brew versus what's the perfect brew for me? Did, will I nail it in here? Will I find that out in here? Will I use this, how will I use this information, you know? And again, it's so pretty. <laughs> and it even comes, like, look, it even comes with this, um, this little bookmarker here, that's so cool. Um, and yeah, like I was saying, I was getting into note taking. This is right up my alley in terms of, you know, how I want to, to nurture this uh, new practice and new skill. And I think it reminds me again, um, to be conscious. This is all a part of what I feel is conscious coffee and not just have it be this thing that kind of like is in the clouds, but conscious coffee being, I'm actually in here. I'm consciously writing things down. I'm consciously thinking about how it's changing the way I do things and how I perceive the world around me with the help and the vehicle of coffee. I knew coffee would do this for me. I just didn't know how, how, how. Right, so that's <laughs> that's what these vlogs are for, is to like see the how. Hey, in the beginning, two years ago-ish, you know, you were doing this and you thought this. And see how far you've come. Um, and I think that's so exciting because I'm actually documenting this transformation in myself. And uh, hopefully inspiring somebody else to, to open their mind too. Because I, I just know how I think limiting and defeating i think it can be when you your yourself are just like putting yourself in a hole and we do we do it all the time all of us because we're human and i don't know maybe we like routine or we don't we know we're we're fearful of change um and those are all very natural things and in some ways i'm like i'm down to be uncomfortable in a lot of other things why not here and it's, I think it's what I said to you guys was like this, this, um, this fear of not wanting to waste, not wanting to lose what I think is good enough already, you know, like, it's like, you're not going to take away my coffee and how I do it for me, you know, um, that kind of vibe, but learning to, learning to, um, grow abundant in my perspective and not scarce, like learning to know that I can have my way, you can have your way, we can all have our way with coffee, like coffee is for everyone. Um, and that just makes me feel so much happier. Um, and and uh, I, I feel like because I'm not judging others and I'm not judging myself, everything is just a lot ha more happy. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make sense? I don't know. I grew up with a little, like a lot of judgment and a lot of like guilt built into my upbringing and uh, even in my relationship. Da da da. Like and, and those are so sneaky um, ways of of how um, they can they can come into your life and kind of limit the way that you uh, view the world. And so now I'm kind of like with coffee being that vehicle lifting me up. And getting a better view of, of who I've been. And, and then now going like, oh, cool, like I can be that instead. Anyway, very cool. I'm very excited. Let's taste this coffee while we're here in our little coffee break. I thought I was going to be over caffeinated. Um, and I was hyped at <laughs> the thing. I felt like I had a lot of energy running through me. And when I finally got home, it took me like 45 minutes to get home. I was like... Oh my God, I'm so tired. So I had to just like zone out for a minute. And then, but I'm so glad I could still come on here and, you know, tell you guys about it. It's still warm. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I still taste the dilution that's going on um, in this in this brew, which is just, it's interesting, that's all. Um, what's more interesting and what's more fun and useful 
is to be able to brew different things for yourself. And if you can really, you know, if you can take the time to do that for yourself, that would be really cool. I would encourage you to do it. I had a professional do it for me, so that was really fun. <laughs> but it was nice to, you know, start at that standard. But now this is definitely something that I would be comfortable about doing on my own at home and being like, here's, here's, um, here's um, French press. Here's AeroPress. Oh my God, I have so much to share about AeroPress, and but we'll do that in another video. Here's V60 pour over. Here's Stag pour over, right? Cause that's a different thing. Um, here's a uh, espresso, right? And we're gonna time them all. We're gonna use the same coffee. We're gonna have a little fun experiment and just see what I like. And then the most important thing that I was getting to, the point is, oh cool, we can see where acid acidity is accentuated here in this type of brew. Why? Why is it accentuated here? Oh, because maybe, you know, the total brew time was less than, was less than uh, three minutes or two minutes 30 or whatever it is, right? And then, oh, like I'm tasting this French press and I'm getting this sort of like, it's more bitter. And at the same time, it's more diluted. And I taste the difference between the dilution and, and, uh, and a brew that's not diluted, right? So to, to taste the difference. Because otherwise, if you're tasting the same thing over and over again, you're not gonna know the difference. And in, in, uh, in the big, big scheme of things, it's like, I don't know exactly what I like and why, right? You can just say, I like pour over and that's it. Well, why? Have you tasted everything else, right? So it just gives you a lot more data to extrapolate an answer for, right? If we're gonna get geeky with it, right? So, I don't know, that was so fun. Those were the big things. You'd have to take the class yourself to really, you know, make those aha moments for yourself or any, but you know, if you're not, if you're not in the area, if you're not in California or whatever, then definitely try to take one in your local area, do a brewing class, go through the motions, ask your questions, um, come in there, uh, you know, maybe have a notebook or something. And I would have a notebook, not to take notes, but really just to like, an, a question would come up in my mind and I didn't want to interrupt. So I would I would write down my question. And I said, here's a ask about bypass on the fellow stag, ask about paper quality. So I had to have these little questions that I could um, write down and then remember and ask at appropriate times. Last thing before I go, this was a nice little coffee break, but I've got to get back to work and I've got to go roast these coffees before it's too late and I get too tired. It's already almost five, wow. I got a pack of Mara here, a little sample for me. Always hooks it up. And then I got this Ethiopia Guji. Um, what does it say? Oh, I'll put I'll put it up right here. Um, but it's natural process. Um, but I'll be doing this and then trying to run some of these same experiments that he did. And I'm really trying to um, start filling out my new logbook for brews and try to find my own recipe and what I like and love. And then I'll share that with you guys as I try to figure out what that is and what does that look like to start? What does it look like to find something you like? And then go from there, you know, like, I don't know, I have no idea. Pacamara, never roasted Pacamara before, but it'll be just a little sample. This is probably about, what, 100 gram? Um, we'll do that too. I have a couple of coffees that I want to um, roast, yeah, for family and friends and stuff. And then lastly, um, our other business, photography business, is launching a new coffee blend right here. We're doing a giveaway on our, um, on our uh, IG for that and um, the labels came in. So I get to, this is so fun. I get to put labels on coffee. That's really fun for me. <laughs> this is a this is a company that I, I typically go to for the stickers that you guys see that I include with your orders. Um, it's called Sticker App. They're really good. Um, and I really like that they have free shipping. Cause definitely for something so small, I'm like, oh, 
Why are you charging me $14? Some companies charge like a lot for shipping. Anyway, this is a very limited run. We don't know. I just wanted, you know, we wanted to launch a, um, a branded coffee. So it's got this kind of like matte finish. Uh, yeah, a matte finish, nice little velvet feel. Uh, it's all sharp, looks very good. Yeah, they look good. Uh, selling coffee on our other business and you know, it's a it's an obvious collaboration. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of uh, clients and couples that enjoy coffee and we include it in there um, and their little care packages when we deliver their photos. <sighs> wow, okay, so fun. I encourage you guys to check it out if you're in uh, California. Um, if you're in Anaheim area, I'll put the links in the description. I thought it was amazing. I thought it was really great. Jared, one of the best, you just, one of my first teachers in the, like, real life teachers and uh, mentors in the coffee space when I first started. So I'm really grateful for him. I think he's a really great mentor in that way. And you can never, you never get any weird arrogance vibes from him just always so giving and generous with his time um and i think that's really special in this day and age you know somebody who's generous with their time because i'm i'm not generous with my time <laughs> so i'm like wow that's good for you all right good things thanks for hanging out today on this coffee break and we will see you next time bye oh man okay so i was about to get started <laughs> roasting these orders and I forgot my little SIGs. My little SIGs that I thought were SIGs in class. And I said, are those SIGs? <laughs> and he's like, no, they're third wave water, uh, mineral supplements that you put into distilled water. Or if you are like me and you have a um, uh, osmosis, what is it? Reverse osmosis water. Um, system then you can put this in there so it's this little packet I haven't opened it yet but uh, it's this little packet into a gallon of distilled water or uh, reverse osmosis water so the thing is with this why you would want to use third wave water and I just riffed on this something on the last um, uh, vlog I was like I will do that it's like well I think the only reason why I wasn't doing it was begin because my own aversion and fear to, to change and to, to thinking that it would make my life harder than it is. But um, basically, and I, and I just met somebody else who actually makes their own of this, which I will experiment with it, I think at some point. Um, but I'm definitely gonna do this versus just reverse osmosis water, which I have been doing, um, and just see what the difference is for myself. You know, is it worth it for me to do that, to make that change and commit to that? Um, but yeah, I definitely wanna, you know, know what all the kids are doing. Um, but yeah, he gave this to us. There's even water profiles for espresso and then for dark roast coffee. So, you know, it's serious business. But um, I thought this was so cool. Um, you can definitely go and make your own. It's basically minerals. You're adding a certain mineral amount to water. Right. I've done this before. I've done this many times before when I've, you know, I go to a, a special place and they make me special coffee. Um, but at home, I didn't feel compelled to, to do that, to make that change, to buy these. Right. And I think if you buy these, they are, they get quite expensive. So definitely we'll look into something more economical, but I, I need to look up the price for this or I'll put it right here on the screen and see if that's a, something I can commit to. If I'm, if I'm trying to have the best cup of coffee for myself, you know, um, and honor all the things and honor the process and, and, and consume the coffee in the best way possible. Um, because I can, you know, it's like a, it's like a little treat. Um, and then if I should too, that's probably a question. <laughs> should I? It's because I can or because it honors the whole process of coffee. And we owe it to coffee to, do we owe it to coffee to, to drink it in the best way possible? And is that subjective in and of itself? Because really, it's the best for you. What's the best method for you? But I think, I think for me, I would love to 
explore this some more, discover this some more. I feel like because I have now more access to it, I'm now more open to the idea, right? Um, and just discovering it more and really just making room in, for, in my brain and in my mind about things like third wave water, you know, and not getting to, not thinking in the fearful scarcity mindset, but in the abundant mindset. Like I have room for all the ideas. I have room for all the new changes and innovations and evolutions uh, that's gonna happen in coffee. Cause you know, it's gonna go beyond this. You know, you know, it's gonna, something else gonna happen after this. I don't know what it is, but the people who are in this industry and tinkering and tinkering and tinkering, there will be a newer and better way to do things, right? And so instead of going against the grain with that and like having the attitude of like, oh, what, what new thing do I have to buy now? It's like, oh, cool. What else have you done? You know, it's just, just more explorative and uh, more open for sure. So yeah, just, you know, this is cool. <laughs> Always see them do this on the TV. I don't know how their face looks, but I don't know. That's kind of cool. Anyway, yeah. Back to work, just wanted to share that.